irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on LA Talk Radio. Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you question your career reality. This show is for you if you are considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guests on the show will provide you with tips, advice, and resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. And our guests work in various professions and are at different stages of their career. So that means that we will definitely have someone on the show who will be able to help you with your show business career questions. If you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, or listen to their interview instantly, and you can even download one of the shows, go to the LA Talk Radio website. That address is latalkradio.com, and you will click on the link at the top of the website uh, that says Channel One, scroll down and look for the graphic of our show, Question Reality, and you you just click the link and that takes you directly to our archive page and the archive page is where you can view the list of all of our past guests we've been on the air since 2008 and we have all types of people for you to listen to if you want to be a PR rep if you want to be a talent agent if you want to be a producer a director an actor a model a stuntman a uh, script supervisor, if you want to be, of course, a Grammy award-winning artist, because we've had Oscar winners, Emmy winners, and Grammy winners on the show. So you see the really big, big, I've made it red carpet people. And then you have the working actor, and then you have people who are just starting out uh, in the business, the novices. So you really hear about their laurels and accolades. So this show really asks the questions that you need to know in order to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. Now, you uh, can download our free app for your Android or iPhone and listen to uh, any of the other exciting and informative shows, too. There's lots of different types of shows uh, on the L.A. Talk radio station, so please make sure that you download the app from our homepage on latalkradio.com. It's located towards the bottom of the page. Just scroll down a little bit, and you can download the app and listen to us every week of your life until the day you die a question reality who wouldn't want to question the reality every single day of their life <laughs> except when you're getting drunk nobody wants to question the reality when they're getting drunk but you never know some people do and they have the crying blues it depends what kind of a drunk you are uh, now our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section and on stitcher.com so just go to their websites and type question reality radio in the search box and there you are you can download them directly now if you want to find out about our future guests that's a whole different website that's my official question reality Reality website, and that address is questionrealityradioshow.com. Questionrealityradioshow.com, and that'll tell you who's coming up on the show so you can get all excited and titillated about the guest, hopefully. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Very exciting things happening. We've got some really great guests coming up. A uh, phenomenal talent agent is coming, coming on the show. Talent manager, sorry. Uh, he was was uh, one of the uh, managers that helped discover Zach Efron. Uh, just a ton. There's, there's a bullet list of people. So you want to tune in for that show for sure. And he'll be coming up. You can go to questionrealityradioshow.com and check him out. But he is a star maker. And he manages some of the top 
people in the business. So if you want to know what the pet peeves are or how to get uh, have the best relationship with the talent manager or even how to get a talent manager, because some people try and they just can't make it happen, uh, you want to tune in for that show. His name is Ryan Glasgow. Okay, now we have two cute, adorable actors, actors, actors on the show today. And I've only had a couple shows where we've had husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend on the show. But I love to bring couples on. So if you're a couple and you're pursuing a career as uh, actors, please contact me. Again, questionrealityradioshow.com if you're working professionally. Because I love to bring you on and get your perspective because it's one thing to pursue a career as an actor as a single person, but as a couple, there's many dynamics that uh, a lot of people are curious about. And today we have LaRon. I love this name. This should be a total cologne. LaRon DeWinter. LaRon DeWinter. Oh, I can smell it now. (laughs) Sable notes and flowery things and woody and earthy. I smell it. I smell it. And his lovely, I believe girlfriend, but could be fiance. We'll find out. I could get it wrong. Uh, Her name is Jessica Lynn. Lindsay Gilbert, and they are actors hitting the pavement, grinding the grind together. And it's always so wonderful to have someone pursuing a career uh, with you and they're your mate. But that's it's not so good sometimes. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good. So we're going to find out the scoop because I hear horror stories and then I hear, oh, I couldn't have done it without him and her. So uh, we're going to find out. Now, Laurent is an actor originally from the Netherlands. I don't think I've ever had someone from the Netherlands on. Could be wrong. I did have some hot Swedish guys on a couple years ago, but I think it might have been from Denmark or Norway. Not sure. Uh, And Jessica is an international model and actress. She is absolutely gorgeous. So go to their websites now. Jessica's website is jessicalindsaygilbert.com and that's J-E-S-S-I-C-A-L-I-N-D-S-E-Y G-I-L-B-E-R-T dot com and Laurent is L-A-U-R-A-N-D-E W-I-N-T-E-R dot com. So you can go and check them out while we are uh, talking to them. Now, boys, when you go to Jessica's website, don't be whipping out the Vaseline or or moisturizing lotion. You know what you'd be doing it for because she's hot and sexy. So don't be doing it while you're listening to my show. I'll just know. I'm psychic. I'll just know what you're doing. That's it. Um, Now, some of the interview questions that we are going to talk about today, we're going to ask them, what are some pet peeves actors have at auditions and on the set? What positive things can actors do to make themselves memorable to the director? And also, what steps can actors take to build a successful career? And we got a whole bunch of really good questions, uh, and we're going to get answers for them. Now, just again, as I said, Laurent is an uh, actor originally from the Netherlands. He was raised in the Netherlands. Netherlands. Um, he actually started his life as a cyclist. So this is a really great uh, opportunity to see how you can make a transition from one career uh, into the entertainment career. So we're going to find out how he did that, why he did it, et cetera, et cetera. And um, he has been acting, going to actor schools, the actor center, the actor studio, the actor's pulse. And he actually worked as a campaign manager for UNICEF, Amni International, literally raising millions of dollars for charity. And then he left Australia to uh, head to Hollywood. He's from the Netherlands, but he went to Australia to work, uh, start his corporate career. And uh, then he came to California and, and uh, he's been here for a little a little time now. And he's already starred on a variety of television series and films. And uh, we are going to talk to him about that because it's really great. Again, this, this show is about questioning your career uh, reality. So if you are a person in the corporate world, and you've always wanted to pursue a career as an actor or in the entertainment industry, this is perfect to talk to Laurent because he was making it happen. He was a, a very successful in the corporate world. And a lot of people say, 
why would you ever leave a corporate career making all that money to become an actor where you're sharing a can of tuna fish in one egg, a jumbo-sized egg with your partner for a whole week? Well, we're going to find that out. Um, Lindsay is uh, an actress, but she's also an international model, and she's from Kansas. Oh, I have the whole Dorothy thing. I'm just picturing Dorothy right now, a little Dorothy, a little Le- Jessica Lindsay Gilbert from Kansas. Um, and she moved to Seattle, Washington, Washington and then she uh, discovered her love of acting after her mother took her to see a local theater production. Oh, my God, of The Wizard of Oz. I was just, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm reading this, and I just, can't, I hadn't read it before, and sure enough, there you go. Wow, Kansas, oh, Wizard of Oz, oh, it's all making sense. Um, Jessica has been studying dance, jazz, ballroom, modern for over three years, but decided to put her dance studies on hold to join theater. Um, she has performed, of course, in theater. She's continuing to rediscover her love of acting uh, since 2012. Uh, when she was offered a leading role in an independent film. And again, she's here in Los Angeles and she's going to acting school and focusing on her acting and modeling career full time. So let's get in it and let's just find out what's going on. Welcome to the show, LaRon and Jessica. Woo! Hello, hello. How are you? Wow, that's it. You two are an exciting little power couple waiting to happen, aren't you? Absolutely. Thank my you. My God. And you, when you pull up their website, you will see, my God, LaRon is walking around sporting a six-pack or an eight-pack. I had, I had to pull up his website, you know, to write my questions for the show and my husband happened to walk by and he's like are you on are you on a porn site i said no that's laron he's not a porn star he said well if he isn't he should be he looks like a porn star <laughs> and i'm like if, if you think that laron is hot why do you see jessica she's in, she's even better looking <laughs> <laughs> well, you, know, you guys, uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is because, uh, yes, it is natural that if you are a good looking person, you would most likely pursue a career in entertainment. Why not? That is what. I mean, realistically, that is what dreams are built off of. That's what Hollywood wants to see, even though we're trying to change that and get old fluffy people like me more focused in the <laughs> arena. But uh, it is about the the beautiful still, which you two are. Now, <clears throat> what are some... We'll start with uh, Jessica, ladies first, uh, and then we'll go to Laron, and that's how we'll answer the questions from now on. Um, so we don't overlap and call some buzzing or whatever happens during the show when you overlap uh what are some of your most recent projects give us the highlights we'll start with jessica and then laron um well right now i'm really excited i just got a cast uh for my first lead in a feature film and uh we're in uh, we're in pre-production right now and it's called a winter's end and i'm really excited because i've read the book it was a book and i get to play uh Two characters, so that's really exciting for me because I play someone from the '40s, and then I also play someone uh, modern day. And wow. uh, this, I don't want to give too much away, but it intertwines, and so I get to be myself in the film, but I get to play two opposite people. So Absolutely. I'm excited about that. Well, you must be. I have not uh, seen your acting, but you must be a very good actress to be able to play a period piece. That's a very hard thing to do, to play modern, uh, a contemporary uh, character and then uh, a period piece character. Very, very difficult uh, to pull that off. <clears throat> Uh, within the same film. So that is very exciting. Um, are you, is it going to come out this year? Is it expected to come out in theaters or is it an independent film, independent feature? It's an independent feature and uh, it's, we, we start filming in June and we're going to be filming eight weeks and then they're looking to release it in, in November or December of this year between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And they're, they, 
And it will go to Redbox for sure. And then we're going to see, for entry, they're going to enter it enter into some film festivals and we'll just kind of see from there but I'm very excited now um do you uh, do you know anything about the the business end like you you just said that it's going to go to Redbox and then film festivals are you are you just uh, the actor are you involved in any of the producing or any of the I'm, business I'm just an actress in oh, it yeah okay, okay. Um, but uh Fantastic. Yeah, but That's someday cool. I would uh, I would like to to learn more about the other side. But right now I'm just taking it, acting, acting in it, and doing and doing two separate roles is a is a full time job enough it in itself for me right now. It most certainly is. Now you were a model. Are are you? I assume you're still modeling, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, and what type of jobs do you get hired for? Are you like a Sports Illustrated model or, you know, lingerie or what type of model are you? Well, usually they, um, they book me. I do, I've do. i done like a swimsuit and I've done um, some clothing and some ca- catalog type stuff. I'm not a very tall person. So I've never, I've never really done, I've never done runway or anything like that. I'm only 5'5". Five five. <laughs> Wow. Well, you know what? Tyra Banks has brought the petite model back. I did you. I don't know if you watched that, but I love Tyra Banks and I, I love uh, uh, her show. And she had a, a show a couple years ago where she focused on petite models. So I really thought that was great to bring petite models into the into the limelight because uh, there are gorgeous petite people and they deserve to model. I mean, I don't most people are not six foot tall. I don't even know how. Well, that got started as a popular form of modeling. I mean, why wouldn't you choose people that are the average five eight and under? What the, who the hell? How many people are that tall? Unless you go to the Netherlands, where they're all tall over there. Now, uh, how? Let me ask you, Jessica. How, in your opinion, again, these are all your opinions. How mm-hmm. does a model make the transition from modeling to acting? Well, I think. Uh, I think for me, um, acting is is much is is more of a challenge. But I I really like it. They're in the same in the same genre. You know, it's easier to step into acting. I think if you have done modeling because they do care a lot about um, the way that you look, the way that you present yourself. You're familiar in front of the camera, things like that. But uh, I would say that it's they're they're two very different things. And uh, what I like more about acting than I, than I did modeling is that I I get to play a character and I get to tell a story in someone else's shoes and hopefully give them the perspective of of a character and of of a story something they've never seen before or in a way that they haven't seen something so that to me is more rewarding than modeling but modeling is uh, is very fun and I enjoy it as well. And you get paid lots of money. So who wouldn't <laughs> like modeling? And who the hell would want to be called a model? If you're a model, you know, you're just a hottie. Now, what, <laughs> now let me out. We're going to end this thing about uh, modeling. But I, I have a question. What is the biggest misconception about the transition from modeling to acting? Um, you know, what is the biggest misconception about models in in general, because a lot of people, they scoff. They're like, oh, it was a model. Now she's an actor. She's not really an actor. She's a model trying to be an actor. Um, you know, what are what are the misconceptions? Because you know you've heard a lot. What What, is, what well, are some? I think uh, a lot of them, they, they think that uh, you care more about your appearance than you do about the role. Or I think that can be a misconception. It's not... I mean, it could be true in some people's cases, but I, I think not, not usually. So I think that's a, a big misconception. I think people often think that people that have done modeling that step into acting, they care more about their appearance than they do about telling the truth of the character or that they're afraid to not look uh, attractive in the camera if the role calls for it, and I, I don't think that's true. You know, no, I can I'm- see a lot of... I'm sorry. sorry. We're going to overlap because of the speakerphone thing. Uh, obviously, your looks are a positive in the entertainment industry, but are they a negative in any, in any way? If so, how? Um. Yeah, I think so. There's been a um a couple times I've 
I've tried out for things and they already had the lead cast when I was uh, first auditioning and I remember when I was first auditioning I could take rejection rather hard and um, I remember one time they told me that I couldn't I couldn't do as much background work or I couldn't get some roles because I was I stood out too much in, in the background, and that was hard for me because it could it made me feel like, well, I have to kind of start and work my way up. So how am I how am I ever going to start? That was discouraging in the beginning, but I think mm-hmm. if you just keep trying, it gets easier and easier and easier, and you get more confident. With thousands of beautiful females coming to LA every day, the competition. Uh, as an actress is obviously fierce. So in your opinion, how can other beautiful girls who want to be taken seriously for their acting talent, what can they do to stand out in the crowd? Um, Well, I think it's very important for someone to be themselves, first of all, because um, a lot of times people try to model themselves after someone. And I think sometimes that can be a mistake because I've met so many people, and nobody I've ever met has been exactly alike. Everybody is so uniquely different. So I think it's very important to be to be yourself, and I think it's uh, very important to always be be confident because no one is a a hundred percent happy with everything about themselves or about their look or about their body or the way that they speak or the way that they do things. But to just know that what you are, where you're at in your life, that it's enough. And you just keep trying. And over time, you'll get better and better and better and better. But to just show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, showing up is half the battle. Now, let's go to LaRon. LaRon, LaRon, are you there, LaRon? Yes, yes, I'm right here. (laughs) How are you? Oh, my God. Now, let me ask you, how is, uh, we want to know this, how is the actor's life viewed upon in the Netherlands? Are there lots of opportunities as an actor in the Netherlands, a lot of acting schools, plays? If you are born in the Netherlands and you want to be an actor, what do you do? What's happening? What's happening in the Netherlands? Well, in my case, uh, you moved to Hollywood. (laughs) (laughs) Um yeah, I mean, uh, you know, th- there is a lot of opportunity in Holland as well, but um, I'm planning to have a very long career in the entertainment industry, and uh, I want to reach the whole world. So for me, America is the place to be. Um, but there, there's lots of great TV shows and movies as well uh, that are being made in Holland. Oh, I see. I'm not familiar. I know, of course, there's lots of short films and independent films that are uh, submitted. I'm I'm a screener for the Burbank Film Festival, and we get a lot of uh, foreign films. And uh, yeah. I do see a lot coming from the Netherlands. As a matter of fact, um, I do screen them. They're very they're quite good. They a lot of attention, high production value on the films. Very good actors, yeah. serious actors, serious actors. Don't see many comedies come in my way, but uh, dramas, they got some dramas. Very good actors, I feel. We're serious people, huh? Well, well I, I'm just talking about the films of screen. Very serious actors. They take their craft seriously, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Very high production value. They uh very powerful actors. Uh, I, I just wish more people from the Netherlands would come on over. Come on over, Netherlands people. Whoever's listening, yes, come yes. over. Now, what I'm is... waiting for some friends. Yes. <laughs> now, what was the hardest part? Because you do come from a corporate background. So is it something where did you, what did you want to do when you were a child? Did you want to be an actor, but then you got uh, into the career of a corporate career by choice or accident? And then you went, you said to hell with it, I'm going to go back to my dreams or was it to pursue a career as a, a corporate person and then you said oh you know what let me try this acting thing yeah that, that's a great question uh, all of that actually happened after uh, my psychic career I moved to Australia and um, honestly at that point I didn't know what I wanted to do I discovered very early I think I was there for a few weeks and then I discovered you know what I'm going to I'm going to go for acting. I'm going to really go for it, and that's what I love. Um, but at, at the same time, my visa uh, there had some restrictions. 
I got I got a sponsorship um, with charity. I worked for UNICEF and Amnesty, and it didn't allow me as well to work as an actor. Um, so what I did is I did as much training as I possibly could. Um, and while I worked for UNICEF and Amnesty, but where I'm at right now, as an actor and as a person, I want to make a difference. So I want them to be combined and... Um, when I have a name as an actor, then I can make a bigger difference uh, through charity and through, um, you know, the way I the way I am and the way I speak, and hopefully encourage people that way. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the hardest part about being an actor? Um, never giving up. Mm. And uh, do do you, do you find that it's very hard to maintain the energy and persistence and determination because it's a it's a it's a really tough life. It really is. People, everybody seems to think who are, who's not in entertainment. They watch television and film and they go, "Ah, oh, yeah. I could do that. That's so easy. I can't believe they get paid all that money for that." Until they try it. And then some of them, of course are natural actors, but most yeah. are like, "Damn, that is so hard." Well, what is the hardest part about being an actor? Is it, you know, the constant pounding the payment, the networking, the socializing, the, you know, the getting the money for the headshots and the acting classes. What, what are some things that? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. Um, I, th- I think, uh, like you said, and like I said before, it's the determination really that's the hardest part because um, sadly most people don't go 100% uh, for it. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes with it. You were talking about looks before and acting uh, abilities. Um, and obviously, it's, so that's very important. But I believe if you don't have the right attitude, no matter how you look or no matter the connections you have, it's not going to happen, you know? What, and, was your, what was your aha moment when you decided that you really wanted to work in the entertainment industry? Because, you know, you're working in your corporate job, la di da di da di da What was it that just kept drawing you into the entertainment industry and you finally said, you know what, I definitely want to pursue a career as an actor. What was that? Um, well, so some different reasons. Uh, first of all, I love acting because um, I... I I see it a little opposite, I think, as how most people see it. I think in uh, in real life, we pretend a lot. So um, I, I communicate, let's say I was working for someone, I would communicate to my boss different than I would to my parents or to my friends or to, uh, to a police officer, um, you know. So in that sense, in real life, we're, we're not always being ourselves. And I feel, um, as an actor, I get permission to, no matter how, um, how I don't know, insecure or unhappy or uh, um, uh, cocky or however the character feels, I can fully um, live that. And, and that is something that I really love as a personal exploration. And then I love, um, I love also what I'm. What I'm so that's why I love acting, but I also love the difference that I can make with it. Mm. Have you guys ever worked on a film project together? Right, right now we uh, we just started actually. Uh, someone gave us a pilot, and uh, they're going to be we're going to film it. They have the budget for it, and then we're going to be uh, they're going to shop it around to some showrunners. So it's our first time actually working together on a on a project and um, it, it's funny because in, in the project that we're working on we're, he's playing kind of a, a facetious mean guy and I'm a, a different nice person and we don't like each other in the project so it, it's very fun it's, it's, uh, it's something very different than we're, how we're used to communicating with each other so I really like it Well, it, what, what do you feel and this is in general not just because it's the two of you, uh, because I'm sure you know couples that have worked on projects before. What is the best and worst thing about working together as actors, as a couple, that you feel in general? Um, well, I think the the best thing is that uh, he 
no one, uh, no, I think another actor can understand what another actor goes through when they get ready for a role. The good things is he can help me learn my lines. He can help me um, do things. He can help me uh, prepare really, really well. And I think the worst thing for me is um, even though it's just a character when I am working with him and I see him do those steamy romantic scenes with someone else, I'm kind of like, in, you know, in my mind, I know it's fake, but I'm kind of like, oh. oh. I know it. I know oh. it. I, I don't care what these actors and actresses say. Oh, we're professionals. You know that you're thinking, oh, my God, he wants him or he wants her or they're having an affair. I, You know, that's just normal. Anybody who <laughs> says that, that, that they don't think about that, you are lying, honey, lying. Uh, now, what advice do you have? for other actors who are couples and they, they use each other as a support system. Uh, how can they make it work? Because I've known some couples that were together years and they started pursuing a career as actors and it broke them up in like six months. So I don't even understand that. But what are some couples, uh, you guys have been together for a while uh, pursuing this career. So what advice do you have uh, that couples can do to make working together or in the same profession as an actor a positive, happy experience? Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. Um, I think um, it starts with uh, the relationship itself uh, outside of acting because if you know, um, you know that you trust each other and that you're committed to each other, um, then... You know, if that if that is the case, then you know it's always going to work out. If that's not the case, it's not going to work out. So then, what the acting career is, or if you fully go for a dream and you have to take risks, or like you said, you have to do scenes uh, with other people, that is just going to be an extra test on the foundation that you already have. So I believe you have to start to start with the relationship that has to be healthy. And if that is healthy, then, uh, and you both have the same goal, and, uh, you know, one person doesn't feel like they're sacrificing themselves, but they're not actually saying it. If you truly have the same goal, then um, that's, that's only going to stimulate uh, each other. Right, and if you're working with a hot actress or actor, and they'll get you all worked up, and you can stimulate your mate when you get home. So it all works out in the end. You got to look at it from a positive perspective. They could get it all worked up. He could come home and whip your ass and you could go, hey, I never knew I liked that, but I like to be spanked. Who knew? <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Woo, let's go to the pleasure chest and buy some kit, some toys. Um, what are, uh, it, we'll start with Jessica and then we'll go to Laurent. What are three characteristic traits definitely needed to reach your goal as a continuous actor? Um, I think, uh, well, for me, one of them is uh, definitely to be, um, determined to be determined to to be able to deal with rejection because I thought as a as an actress uh, you know that it, I wouldn't take uh, rejection so hard and I think the number one thing you got to remember is that not to take when you don't get a job or you don't get a role or something doesn't turn out right not to take that personally that um, that you're not going to be right for every job. You're not going to be right for every role. And it's not something, as long as you try your very hardest and you put your very best forth, that it's not something you can beat yourself up about. I think so really um, being okay with rejection is one thing. I think another thing is to really figure out exactly what you want to do. What I mean by that is a lot of people say they want to be an actor, but they don't know what kind of roles they would want to do, what kind of uh, directors and writers and producers that they would want to work with. So I would say anybody that wants to do something, write down a list of films that they really love and uh, look at those films and see who wrote them, who directed them, who produced them, what actors are in them, and then really kind of it'll get smaller and smaller, the people that you want to work with, the, pe the things that you want to do, it'll get very small, and then you can go out and try to, you know, find agents and talent managers and people that work with the people that you aspire to work with. What do and you... I think, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think that those are the most important things. 
What, what, now, what things do you feel that you should absolutely avoid doing if you're pursuing a career as an actor? Avoid it like the plague. Um, well, if there's something I've found a lot of times, if there's some, if there's, uh, something that makes you feel comfortable or um, something that you don't want to compromise, don't. Because I know t- a lot of people have done roles or done things or done scenes that later on they didn't feel good about, and then it just ate at them for a long time. So if there's if there's a misconception that people think like uh, that you have to do anything or you have to take any role or or that if something comes your way, if you're not comfortable with it, that if you don't take it, your career is never going to go. And I think that's a, a misconception because um, if you're not happy with it or you're not comfortable with it, you're going to do a bad job. Oh, my God. I know exactly what you're talking about, Jessica. Sometimes I'm watching these shows and I see these women and they have to kiss these old nasty ass looking men. <laughs> Woo, Lord. Oh, Lord. And I'm like, oh, hell no. Oh, look at that. And, <laughs> And then my husband says, see, that's why you never became an actor. You could never do that. I'm like, no, I couldn't. He wouldn't. He is not touching my ass with a 10 foot pole. He knew. No. And, and you have to be able to do that. But I really think um, sometimes the actress, she gets cast in this really juicy part. And she says, she sees she's doing like a love scene and it's steamy. And little does she know who the hell she's going to be cast <laughs> opposite and you're like oh god why did I become an actor and then I have actor (laughs) friends they say oh my god they don't that you know they need some breath spray and lord knows you gotta worry about getting herpes because you know you get into these love scenes and you're swapping spit and next thing you know you got like a big patch of of nastiness on the side of your mouth you're like what the hell was i doing i don't i don't supplement my income as a prostitute how the hell did i get herpes well you got it from the other actor i couldn't do it couldn't do it jessica no! Oh, that's, that's why I thought being a sitcom actor is much better. There's very little kissing in the sitcom actor. Uh, now, let me ask you, LaRon, uh, now, uh, what thing, you came here from the Netherlands. Uh, if a person, in your opinion, if a person wants to move to L.A. from another country to pursue a career in show business, what advice would you give them before they come and after they get here? Examples, uh, uh, what should they, you know, the minimum amount of money, because I'm telling you, Jessica and LaRon, some people come out here on a Greyhound bus with like a dollar fifty in their pocket and they think they're going to land at the bus stop, they're going to be discovered and right to the red carpet. And I beg people, please do your research. It takes a lot of money to move to L.A., a lot of money. you got to save at least a, a year's salary for your, you got to think about what would it cost to rent uh, an apartment, to get a car for gas, for headshots, for acting classes. It's a lot of money, people. Don't come out here on the Greyhound bus, especially if you look like Jessica, because you're going to get, you're going to run into a gorilla pimp, and the next thing you know, you're going to be trafficked in, trafficked in, I can't say that word, tra- human trafficking. <laughs> you're going to end up in a human trafficking thing, because the gorilla pimps are at the bus station. So, uh, Laurent, you're coming from another country. Uh minimum amount of money you know what's the safest and most economical place to live you know what should the aspiring actor focus on when they arrive here from another country um well yeah you said it already a little bit uh do your research that's very important be prepared um um you know and but at the same time you don't really know how something is in reality uh, versus on paper so um uh maybe i maybe I could have done a little more research. I just came here with not a whole lot and um but um I think what I had is uh, a very strong determination. I just said i'm gonna stay and it's gonna happen. I don't care what the odds are and um yeah, I mean it's great if you have that attitude, but 
Otherwise, I'd bring a bunch of money. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so you I, could I, save I, a little I, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of money helps. Um, now, what is um, okay? How does Jessica? How does an actor know? I don't know if you guys are represented, uh, have managers or agents, um, but if you yeah. do, okay. How does an actor know when they're ready to seek out representation, like uh, such as an agent or manager or PR rep? Because I tell you, everybody comes to LA and they think, "Oh my God, if I only got." an agent it would change my life it would change my career and they go out and they try to get an agent they don't have enough credits they don't they haven't built up their resume they don't have an agent is investing what these actors need to understand an agent is investing their time in you their time and their money because they only get paid when you book something and they're not going to just take you on if they look at your resume and you have two things on there and people are like i don't understand why lord why (laughs) what can you please you tell them uh what your feelings are on that because you 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 got to be ready to seek out representation or you're going to make yourself look like a fool an amateur it's not going to work out so take it away miss miss thing i would i would say that it's really good well obviously to get in a class so you can practice your craft as often as possible a lot of people know that but also is to find someone that is where you want to be. That's what I did. I found a group of people. I found people that were working. I found people that were doing things that I wanted to do, and I sought out help. And I, and I, and I followed because sometimes it's easier to do something that someone else to follow their footsteps. They've already made the path than to try to figure out everything all on your own. It can be very overwhelming. So if you know someone that does have an agent and you know someone that is working, then go to class, you know, make sure you get a really strong reel made, make sure you do get IMDB credits and uh, have someone someone help you. And then if they are with someone, then they can maybe introduce you and you can, once you have credits, once you have a reel, once you have headshots, once you have got something under your belt. And usually um, the best way to to really cipher out, you know, the, from the minutiae is to get someone that's actually doing it. And Ron, have them in for you. Absolutely. Ron, what's your answer to that? Um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, good. I'm so glad yeah. you agree. Yay. Oh, boy. <laughs> Woo. Now, uh, now let me ask you what uh what what um i I forgot I'm losing my mind. What is the biggest piece of advice you could give to aspiring actors who are not living in l a but think because you don't have to move to l a I mean you could build up a lot of your credits uh on your resume wherever you are doing theater doing i mean Georgia is now the hot hubbub right now if you live in Atlanta, yeah. my God you know so totally. what 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 can you get what a piece of advice can you give aspiring actors who dream of moving to Hollywood before they move here? What do you have to tell them what can they do um well well, like Jessica said, it's uh, there's a lot of stuff that comes with uh, becoming an actor. So I would keep it in my head as simple as possible. I would figure out exactly what my goal is. So maybe you want to be um, you want to be a lead action star in films. Maybe you want to have a reoccurring role in a in a soap opera. So it, you know, so it's first figure out what your goal is. That's step number one. And then you figure out the steps that can take you there. So, uh, and steps can be get headshots, get a reel, um, people. And, you know, there's different ways to get there, but maybe write down all the ways that you can get to your goal. Um, so I'd say that's step number two. And then um, step number three, I know I've said it before, and it's um, I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it's the most vital one because – now you know logically what you got to do, and then the, the last step is character, because you know shit shit is gonna hit the fan all the time, and that, that's not being pessimistic, but it's it's challenging. So um, you got to pick yourself back up every single time, and keep keep holding your vision and keep following the steps, and then I uh, believe you can get there. <laughs> Uh, this question is going to go to Jessica and then Laron, and this will be like the last question because we have two minutes. But Jessica, 
What do you hope at the end of your life, God, uh -huh. I hope it's long, what do you hope to be your biggest achievement in the entertainment career, in the entertainment industry? In the entertainment industry? Um, I think it, uh, it will be that people, when they look on the work that I did, really thought that I told the truth of the characters. Mm. And Laron? Um, well, yeah. I, I, oh, Laron, I already know you want to spread uh, on the on G on on the on the cover of GQ with your six pack or your eight pack. I know, I know what you want. I don't even know why I need to ask you that, girl. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> he wants to be loaded sexiest man in the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you want to be? What do you want to be? Uh, what do you well, hope to achieve? I, I think you guys should just take over. It's kind of fun. Um, well, I'd like to. Um, I'd like for people to uh, to think of me and um, that I can create uh, some sort of a change. That I can inspire people with my roles and with the interviews that I do for people to live their dream. I love it. I tell you, well, the two of you are making it happen. It is, I'm so happy and proud that you two are uh, a cute little couple and you have a support system and you're there for each other. And that's so important. So important. Um, just remember not to get jealous when the two of you have to be with other people. That is so common. That is the, that is the devastation of most couples. When, because this is a career where you got to kiss and make out. And do, you don't have to. I mean, honestly, you can choose roles that you don't do that. It just depends on where you want to go with your acting, as I think Laurent had said earlier. Uh, you don't have to do that. So don't think as an actor you have to just take parts where you have to suck face with just anyone and have love scenes. I mean, you can choose uh, different. Yeah, I just, I just don't choose to watch his scenes like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wouldn't want that either. For for sure. Uh, real quick before we go, um, I wanted to uh, encourage everyone to go. My friend, who actually the talent manager, the one I was talking about earlier, Ryan Ryan Glasgow, who is uh, a manager, he's one of the ones that helped discover Zach Efron. I want you to go to his. Uh, Indiegogo page, Indiegogo.com, and check out his latest web series. It's called Good Job, Thanks, because you know when you go in an audition. And it is a, it is a wonderful one. I watched it. I had to get tissue. It was so funny that I was laughing my ass off. They started in 2011 making the series because Ryan's goal was to get great actors seen by the entertainment community at large, including and especially casting directors. So he figured that if uh, if uh, they were going to watch anything on the computer at all, maybe it would be about a show about a crazy, brilliant casting director, uh, which it is. I'm telling you, this show is so funny. I, I, no one... No one else had ever done a show centered around casting. This was the first show. Um, they probably didn't do it because of fear, but it was. he had a great love for the business, as he still does, and uh, he has a tremendous respect for the casting community, and he created this series, and he very much wants to continue the journey now. Um, they've made, uh, I think, don't quote me on it, but maybe 11 or 15 episodes, not sure, uh, but he's has a Indiegogo campaign where he needs funding to keep it going. And I'm telling you, when you see this, it's hysterical. It's about this crazy casting director and it's about all these actors who come in for jobs and you should see the brilliant actors on here that are really great actors trying to act like bad actors. I mean, it is hysterical. I cannot tell you how funny this is. So once you go there and check it out, you will definitely donate. But uh, he's trying to raise, um, I, I'm not sure how much money is, but uh, if you can donate anything to keep the show on, and once you see it, you're going to say, oh my God, I have to donate. Uh, it is on Indiegogo.com. It is called Good. Oh, 
episode 12. Uh, good job. Thanks. You know when you go on an audition as an actor, right, Jessica? Right, Lindsay? Yes, uh, yes. Jessica, uh, <laughs> Laron, and they go, good job. Thanks. And that's it. Well, you're going to see all of the behind-the-scenes stuff with these casting directors and all of these actors. So and you will learn a lot because I'm telling you, it is for real. This is exactly, I'm excited. This is exactly what they talk about, you actors behind your back in these casting director <laughs> sessions. It is glorious. It's so funny. Check it out. Go to Indiegogo.com. Donate. Help keep it on there. You can watch the episodes. I think he has 12. Again, don't quote me on it. But um, please help them make the next chapter of their story a reality. And uh, you can donate just a small amount. So go there. And they're also on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you type in good job, comma, thanks, you're going to find it. Okay. Say goodbye to your fans, Laron and Jessica. Bye. 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 Yeah, we're going to check out the, the show that you were just uh, talking about. It sounds very exciting. I'm excited to watch it now. Yes, and maybe you guys can audition and listen to Ryan Glasgow. He's going to be on my show. I'm not sure when. I can't remember. But, uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me tell you when he's going to be on, and you guys can oh, check cool. it out. He's going to be on, oh, May 31st. May 31st. Oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, listen to him and then, my God, contact him and um, I don't know how, but you can maybe audition for the show. Who knows? Because they have a ton Yay. of actors it and it's really, really good. So, good job. Thanks. And a good job. Thanks to you two for coming on the show. Thank you. And you got to come back. You promised to come back and keep us updated. Yes. Yes. It was yes. wonderful. Contact me. Contact me after you guys finish this movie and we'll have you come back on. You can tell us all about the excitement, okay? Uh, yes. Fun. Thank you so much. Okay. We, had, we had fun. Good job. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and th <laughs> thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week on Question Reality. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on L.A. Talk Radio.